All right, so we're approaching the end. I guess after that's the final. And the final, I don't remember offhand. Anyone remember when the final is? Is it Wednesday? Wednesday, is that 2 to 4, 12 to 2? 2 to 4 p.m. here. Uh, I'll do the same drill. As the midterm, I'll give you one or two final exams to look at. Format is essentially identical to the midterm. <clears throat> and presumably there will be some time Monday and Wednesday of next week to talk about that. So I'll endeavor to, by the weekend, if not before, get those materials up so you have plenty of time to look at it. Uh, what we have on our plate is we have Project 4. I haven't posted the submission link to Project 4 yet, but I have posted the project description. And I thought that once we get through with questions and so forth, I'd go ahead and start diving into that. We also have the assignment. That what is it? Uh, we have two assignments. So we have assignment twelve that is takes place tomorrow. Is that right? Or, next week. Okay, good, good. So I was a little worried that I didn't have the slightest idea where it was yet, and that nobody does. Uh, so I imagine I'll get that location <clears throat> sometime this week, and I'll mention that in class and post it, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then the uh, so that's an easy assignment. And then the only other assignment with a lot of meat on it would be this assignment eleven. And assignment eleven is an exercise in researching and discovering things in the standard template library to manipulate the information. So I would say primarily for assignment. 11, you need to look in the algorithms section of the standard template library. I believe that's where you'll find everything. I'll double check that uh, over the next day or so and, and update you if I'm incorrect about that. But I believe everything that you need is in the algorithms. Uh, I probably mentioned it last time with the assignment. There's a lot of stuff about don't do loops. That's simply because um, when you do a loop to do this stuff, you're in, a, you're in essence reinventing the wheel. And there's already been an algorithm written to do the bulk of that. So that's the idea here. Use this algorithm instead of manually creating your own algorithm to do it, so to speak. So with that, um, and then, uh, oh yeah, the last day of class, it is optional. If no one shows up, that's fine. Uh, I talk about everything from the Cold War to the price of cars as a bit of a preview, perplexing preview probably. Um, uh, so yeah, you, you definitely don't have to come that last Friday. I'm, I generally don't record that Friday, um, so it's so entirely at your discretion whether you want to get some interesting information or not. All right, so with all that, uh, do you folks have any questions for me before I get started? I'd love to answer questions if you have them. Mm -hmm. How do you fix the 
his uh, segmentation. How do you fix a segmentation fault means something's wrong with your pointers? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so the, the short answer, I'll give you a, a longer answer with an actual strategy. But the short answer is that in 2.11, Tyson teaches 2.11, and one of the things that he focuses on are debugging techniques. And you actually learn how to use a debugger where you hook your executable up to a program that will help you walk through code. And if your program crashes, you can actually bring this thing up in a debugger and it'll say right here is where it crashed. And you can ask questions like what was in this variable and what was in that variable. It's a really, really cool tool, uh, debuggers generally. Uh, I'm not going to get in the debugger here, so I will give you, for lack of a better term, the, the poor man's strategy for finding bugs like that. Now that said, I don't mean to denigrate it because probably... 90% of the time when I'm debugging, I use the quote, the poor man's method of doing it rather than using a debugger. So um, let me create a situation. And that situation will be buggy. All right, so hopefully this will create some problems for us. Um, I've created an array of 100 floats, and then through this pointer, I'm assigning, maybe what I want to do is, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it like that. Uh, I'm, assign, I'm, I'm iterating 100 times, and I'm multiplying whatever i is by 3.14. That's just to give me some numbers to shove into the ith element of this array. It's, I'm not being very clever, so I imagine some of you already have identified the bug, but alright. So there's my bug, and um, what I want to do is I want to put this message, made it this far. And so the idea is see out made it this far one. Made it this far two. Made it this far three. Made it this far four. All right. Let's compile it. Let's run it. It never made it. How far did it get? Got to about line eight. Let's see. Is that right? Made it this far one, made it this far two, and then it bombs. Did not make it to made it this far three, so the only line of code we have is this. So this must be causing it to crash. That seems weird, doesn't it? Because I will be the first to tell you there is absolutely nothing wrong with line eight. And the answer to this poser is that what I have a, I'm using a, t a good technique, which is I'm basically, I, I'm kind of guessing where my problem is, and I'm flooding that area with C out statements, and it allows me to see how far it's gotten uh, before it crashes. Okay, but uh, there, what's going on here is not what you think is going on. It is actually not crashing on line eight. So let me describe to you what's happening. Is um, I think I want the, my picture drawn tool here. Mm. 
Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm sending messages to C out. <coughs> and C out we know is, is an output stream. An output stream is C out. But what that means is when I do a statement like C out less than less than high, high actually doesn't go to the screen. Where high goes is to a buffer. And a buffer is something in memory. And I, it's, yes, indeed, like all memory, it's the railroad tracks. So the high goes here in the buffer and here in the buffer. And now if I add a C out statement, hang on, this is feeling totally dysfunctional. Let me move that. a space there and there's the space T H E R E okay there comes a point where all of this memory gets what is called flushed so the term that I wanted and I'll type it in this time uh, output goes from memory to screen when the buffer is flushed. All right, that isn't quite the thing I was hoping for, but that's all right. I'll just okay. So there are a number of ways for this to occur. Uh, one of them is to say C out. There's actually a member function of output streams called flush. And that will take all of this memory, it'll empty it out and it'll spit the characters on the screen. It also occurs when this buffer gets completely full. And once it's completely full, it's a finite size, it doesn't stretch forever. Let's say it's 1K or 100 bytes, something like that. Once it fills up the 100 bytes, then it will automatically spit all that out to the screen and empty it out so that it can then fill it up again. Um, so there are a number of ways in which this buffer gets flushed. What <clears throat> is happening, that, uh, let me explain now, why do we have buffers? So why do we have this? Why not just say, see out, chevrons high and have the H go to the screen then the I go to the screen and the reason this is not done this way is because of how time-consuming it is now we're speaking relative here relative times it obviously spits out in well under a second well under a tenth of a second as far as that goes but computationally it take what you're doing is you're um, basically shifting things out from main memory onto a device uh, in this case, what you're staring at, this monitor, and it, it takes a fair amount of computation to go through that rigmarole of transferring this stuff from memory onto the screen. Okay, and so to make things faster in general, they use a buffer. So with with high there, rather than having one, two, three, eight separate operations where I'm spitting things out to the screen, or if it's, let's say this is a hundred. Rather than having a hundred separate operations, I just have one flush, and it's just one operation to flush the hundred characters, right? So now that overhead really drops to be quite low. So that's the rationale for having a buffer. <clears throat> and they're used in all kinds of output situations, not just with um, output to the screen. Yes? Does that work with F uh, You have the same issue with fstream, absolutely. It is very time consuming to write from memory out to a file. 
and so your file streams are buffered as well. And only at certain points in time it, it are the things that you're writing out the, to the file getting actually flushed out there. Um, a, a nicety about the close statement for files is if you were to look at the source code inside the close member function, you would see that there's a flush in there, which makes sense. Before you close the file, flush out anything that may happen to be in that buffer, right? Uh, so what's happening in my code here is I say made it this far one, made it this far two, I said made it this far three and this is still sitting in the buffer and it has not been written out to the screen yet. And it's in this loop here. What I have is I have a pointer which has not been initialized. So who knows what this thing is pointing at. It could be pointing anywhere in main memory. And now what I'm doing is in a hundred places at this random location I'm trying to assign some sort of floating point number. And at some point I'm going to trounce all over memory that doesn't belong to me, and I'm being shut down basically on this line of code right here. Okay. So, um, how can I solve this problem? Well, it turns out there is another output stream that you have access to that's in the standard library. You have uh, standard in, standard, standard input, also known as stdin, is cn. Standard output, also known as uh, standard out, is cout. And there's also something called standard error, also known as standard error. So there's another uh, output stream and it's called Sierra. Now Sierra is very much like C out. Anything that goes to Sierra goes to the screen, but there's one important dis difference is that Sierra does not, <coughs> excuse me, does not have a buffer. That means any character that you send to Sierra immediately goes out to the screen. So now let me change all of my, let me do a global search and replace. I want to search for C out and I want to replace it with Sierra. Now let me try it. And I can compile, I run it, and now you see my third output statement. So the original question was how do I find a segmentation fault? And the answer is kind of put in, you, you, if you have no idea at all, you put in a few tentative Sierra statements to kind of um, what do I want to say? You're, you're kind of fencing it in, right? If you've got a program with a thousand lines of code, you just randomly throw in some Sierra statements and you'll see how far you get. And you just gradually narrow it down until you have a small chunk of code and you fill this thing with Sierra statements to figure out what's wrong. So I've narrowed it down to this for loop. I can even put one in this for loop. So I'll move this made it this far for. I'll put that in the loop. Let's uh, let me let me do this. I made it this far 3.5. I made it this far 4. All right. So I have something in the beginning of the loop, end of the loop for each iteration. So I made it to 3.5, and I never made it to 4. So now it's very clear that this is a line of code causing problems. So what's going wrong? Let me see what in the world, uh, let me use here again. Now that I know the problem is here, I'm going to say that i equals, and I want to see what's in i. And I want to say that fp, I want to see what's in fp. Because fp should be the same as arr, so let me do you can see that my hands are used to typing C out. Uh, ARR equals, let me see what's in ARR. All right, so you see I'm starting to print out values to try and get to the bottom of what the issue is. Oh, right here. My FP has zero. I was expecting it to be the same as this. So I go, okay, I have a problem where FP is not taking on the value of ARR like I wanted it to. 
So let me see what I got here. And I do a little look up here and I go, oh, oh, you goofball. Although I'd use harsher terms when I'm calling myself names. Um, I forgot to do line 12, where I initialize FP to be the same as whatever's in R. Now I run this thing and I should get a ton of output occurring. It occurred very quickly. Uh, now that everything is debugged, I can either comment out or delete my debugging statements. And probably what you do, what I generally do is I comment it out until I'm sure that I, my code is exactly the way I want it, and then I'll go ahead and delete them. The reason I don't delete it immediately is I'm probably in the middle of development, and I may end up with bugs again, and then it's a lot easier for me to come here and just start and comment these things rather than putting them back in. Um, the reason I ultimately delete them is if I go back and look at my code or ask someone else to look at my code, it's very hard to see what my program does with all, with all these comments thrown in there. So that's why I end up ultimately removing them. That makes sense? You bet. Any, any other questions about anything? Yes? How do I use new to get the strings in an array? Um, do I know how many strings I have? Five. I'll go ahead and compile this just to make sure. It doesn't do anything. And this doesn't this doesn't have to be a hard coded five, right? Did you not get this from a file? Maybe. Let's just go whole hog with this. Other questions? <coughs> All right. <clears throat> well, let's uh, let's move on then. Project four. Close. Make big. Um, yikes. How can I make this happy? Stop it. Stop it. This is why I like uh, Blackboard. It procrastinates for me. Let's try this again. Is this me? I could have. Why am. I 
Come here, Will. Okay. Oop. Project four. <clears throat> so here's the write-up. I, I won't read it to you, but let me generalize as to the expectations for this project uh, versus the other project. One of the, the big changes is that rather than writing this report out to C out, you are now going to write this report out to a file. Okay? And that file will be called assignmentsreport.txt. Um, but that creates some interesting problems that we need to solve, which I'll probably focus on today, which is that, so we have an uh, assignment report in the depot class, so you're actually opening that file inside of that member function. So I open up assignments report.txt, and then I've got a bit of a disconnect in that What is this called? This is called core dump. In the, uh, the old days, segmentation faults and other similar faults were called just simply called a core dump because what would happen is uh, in order to help you debug, all of the RAM associated with the, the running application would be dumped out onto disk so that you could pick through it later. So that's why I'm calling that core dump. All right. <clears throat> so what happens is we have D. Well, oh, shoot. I guess I had to do this right. Let's call this um, report via file. We have D. What kind of thing is D? It's a depot. We have Bob. Bob is our employee. And we have hammer, which is Bob's hammer uh, tool. Uh, so we're calling, we're calling it equipment, piece of equipment. <clears throat> All right, so I'm making an assumption here. Uh, we haven't talked about how we get the equipment affiliated with the employee, but suffice to say that there is a relationship there. So I'm leaving out a few details just to get paint this in broad strokes. This is main out here this time. And what is happening in main is you're calling the assignment report, whatever you're calling it. I'm going to abbreviate here. <coughs> When you invoke, start the assignment report, that's going to begin a loop. What are you looping on? Oh, actually, let me let me wait. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, what's the first thing we're doing in the assignment report? Think back to when you finished. Uh, what is it that you're printing out first? Exactly, the header. So those were C out statements, right? <clears throat> we have to write it to a file now. So what we're going to do is we're going to open assignments report.txt. I'm just going to say open report file. That's what that means. After I open the report file, then I need to write header. Right. 
write report header to file. Now, okay, now, now we get to the loop. So we're looping, I'm sorry, let me ask again, what are we looping on? Loop on the workers vector. All right, you ask each worker to the display itself. So the way we did it in the old days, meaning last week, was display. And what it was, was it was a bunch of cout statements, yeah? <clears throat> All right. So now let's edit this for what's happening now. <clears throat> Always in the back of my head, I have this guilty feeling like I've really pissed someone off and they're storming out of here. So... How do I, can I fix this problem? From someone other than Thomas. <laughs> or let me ask, does anyone see a problem? I guess that's the first thing. Does anyone see a challenge here, a disconnect? Now let me give you let me give you one solution, and I'll call it the wrong solution. It's a, a solution that that will work, but um, it's a little bit of amateur hour. So what I could do here is here I could close the file, and then in here I could basically. Um, basically repeat this. So I could open report file and output to report file. Yeah? Okay. The reason I'm going to say this is bad is that you do not necessarily... I want... Uh, let me see. You need to code this for the future. And in the future, we know that there are a number of reports that are going to be required. And it's a safe assumption to say that an employee's information is going to appear on any number of reports. So the reason this doesn't work the way I've written it is that this right here is assuming that the report is called assignmentsreport.txt, right? And that means I can no longer use this function as kind of a generic print out the employee function because it will always write that employee to the assignments report.txt file. And we need the roster.txt file for some employee information and the absence report text file, right, for all these different reports. So I need a different mechanism. Blast. I wonder if I buy the professional version, if it gives me more levels of undo. All right, so that, that has to go away. This goes away. What could I pass to the display function? That is one good strategy, pass the file name to the display function. However, I would say that's a uh, not the optimal strategy because what will happen is if I have a hundred employees that have to display, what's going to happen is a hundred employees are going to open the file, right, close the file, open the file, right, close the file, open the file, right, close the file. Yeah, if they're given the file name, 
And that's very inefficient because even though this is a toy application, you're going to get to the real world where you have to do this thing and write out to a file, but you don't have thousands of records. You have millions of records. And I guarantee you, regardless of the computer, if you're opening up a file and closing a file a million times, you may as well go and get several cups of coffee because it's going to take a while. The actual process of opening and closing a file is time consuming. So, I think that's an excellent idea. Pass a pointer to the file. So let's write, let's write a little file code. All right, so how do I open up a file? I say my output file stream is going to be called, I'll just call it outf for lack of a better variable name. And I'll call my file myoutput.txt. How do I write out to the file? What if I want to write the number 3.14 out to the file? Right, once you open the file, it's as easy to use as C out. And then when I'm done, close it. <clears throat> May as well test it to make sure it works. Ran without error. If I get a, and there it is there, my output.txt, I can go ahead and look at that. And there's my 3.14. Okay. So let me ask a different question. I create an integer. I, uh, I like float. I create a float f equal to 99.99. And now I've got a function up on line 4 that I've written. And I want to somehow magically provide f to that function. How would I do that? It isn't a hard question. Just it's what you think it is. I'm not trying to fool you here. Just pass it in there, right? Parenthesis f. And there it goes. So up here we have to say that my func takes a floating point number called f, and then I can do things like I don't know. Um, float x equals f plus 100. So in order for me to use this in a function, I just have to pass it as a variable, yes? All right, looking at this, in order for display to use the file, I just have to pass the file in as a, a variable. So this will be the name of your OF stream variable. Now, and then inside this, this won't be C out. Let, let's say, um, for example, out F. And then here, rather than C out, I would have out F the employee ID, etc., etc., etc. Etc. You didn't. There is a standard command called etc. where it magically gets everything else out that you wanted out. Questions? I'll write a little code. I won't do it with files, but I'll do it with C out for you, and I'll, I'll, it'll show you an issue. So what I can do is I can actually, I'm going to write this function here, and I'm going to pass C out. Now, this is a question that not everyone may know the answer to. Do you know what kind of thing C out is? It's an output. Creek, output, river, output, stream. Good, good. 
Thanks for playing along. I appreciate it. Give it a name. Doesn't matter what you call it. So here I'm calling my func, and I'm passing in C out. So here, keep the golden age of cartoons alive. Um, this almost works, but doesn't quite work. It shouldn't work. Let's see. This thing better complain. If it doesn't, I'll have a little egg on my face. Okay, there it goes. <clears throat> so here's the issue, is that it is unable to do this because what is the relation? If I was to get out my set of railroad tracks and I had to draw stuff on my railroad tracks with C out and OS on line 4, what would I say would happen on line 17? So I say, okay, you pass C out in here and then, and then what kind of drawing do I always do on my railroad tracks? I'd make a new one, right? I'd go over on my railroad tracks a little bit and I'd draw another block and say, okay, this is OS and whatever's in C out gets copied into OS. Yeah, I've probably done that drawing a dozen times with variables. Same thing, it would happen here. It turns out that you can't just willy-nilly make copies of C out. It's like saying, what I'm going to do is make a copy of my screen and have a totally different screen. I mean, that isn't exactly the issue, but the, the semantic is apt in that the only thing that wants to output to the screen is C out itself. So how can I turn OS to be another name for C out rather than a copy of C out. Now you're going to have to dig back into your memory a full 72 hours. Huh? Say it. Oh yeah, reference. Good job. All right. There we go. So now OS is not its own variable. OS is a reference to, in this case, C out. It's merely another name for C out. So that anything I'm doing with OS, I'm actually doing to C out. All right? So here I am. So this is actually C out based on line 17. And I'm sending that to C out. So let's try it and see if it works. Compiles fine. And there we go. Exact same way with files. You have the same issue with files. You cannot. You don't want to pass the files in by value. You want to pass in the reference to the file. So when I look at this drawing here, so you'll pass out f in into this uh, display function, and then when you write the employee's display function, you have to say that that output file stream is a reference, right? And this will solve uh, all your problems with compiling there. Now, this is something you should be able to take, even though I haven't talked about the tools yet. This is something that you can take your existing Project 3 code and you can start modifying it or make a copy of it in its project into a Project 4 directory and modify the copy. You should be able to start modifying this and be able to have your existing Project 3 write out to a file instead of to the screen. That'll get you a good chunk of the way there towards finishing Project 4. Questions? All right, then Oops, I want yeah. Today's Phrase of the day is missile command. <clears throat> I can, yes. Huh? Yeah, I mean, if you took the, the show. Oh, thanks for reminding me. I nearly totally forgot that. Okay, this is. So here's the deal, right? And a lot of you youngsters don't know this, but TV wasn't as great as it is now. I mean, now it's like 
game show network. Is that like awesome or what? But um, yes, sarcastically. <laughs> You see, if you want to watch a cartoon right now, any one of you, set aside YouTube and that. If you just look at the, the television, well, you can just go to the Cartoon Network or whatever and see a cartoon. Back in the old days, the only time you really got to see cartoons was Saturday morning. It's Saturday morning cartoons, right? Everyone's eating the cold cereal, or if you're lucky, your parents are making you the pancakes, and you're watching the Saturday morning cartoons. This is every 1970s kid's wet dream right here. The banana splits. All right. You need to get on. This is if you're you're straight laced. You don't do drugs, but you're if you're curious, you want to know what it's like to be stoned. Bring up some of this stuff on YouTube and watch it. All right. Have a good one.